Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the dial train. It's kind of a nifty little mechanism. Uh, I believe it was probably invented probably in the 1600s sometimes I'm guessing. Um, so we need to figure out this is the first thing that I built for the clock because everything uh, in the clock itself is um, designed to turn this one shaft behind here. I'll show you that in a minute. So you can see these gears are creating the proper ratio for so it can tell time. The dial would sit right over that part right there so you can tell the time. So let's take this apart. Um, the whole thing holding this together is that minute hand just press fit on that shaft. I'll take that gear out, this gear, and this gear. This scrap piece of wood here um, represents the frame or the front plate of the clock. The upper pin right here is, sta is, uh, is stationary. It's not being driven by anything behind here. Um, this one here is a 5 30 seconds of an inch brass tubing. And it's convenient because a one inch brass rod goes right inside there. And it makes for a nice bearing. Now, normally when, the, when this is installed in the clock, there will be another gear attached to this shaft right here, which will spin that, this gear here. Also, too, it's very important to, to know that this uh, minute, here, minute hand here has a 1 8 inch hole in it. And it's hooked directly to that shaft right there. So is that when this gear behind here turns this gear, it'll also turn the minute hand. Um, it's also important to note that the dial train is, uh, uh, is turning, or the drivetrain, I'm sorry, the drivetrain is turning this gear one time per hour. And you can see that's very convenient because the minute hand is attached to that shaft and that's what you want it to do. You want it to go around once per hour. All right, so now the the rest of it is all designed to to uh, turn the hour hand at a certain rate. So this gear here is called the minute wheel. Um, and there's a minute pinion on there. In clock making, the large gears are wheels and the small gears are pinions. Now this this gear here is simply being driven by this and in pinion here. Okay. And then this hour wheel is important because it has also a 5 30 seconds inch tubing on there. And the hour hand is directly attached to that tubing. Um, when I slip this over that 1 8 inch shaft, here let's do it this way. If I slip this over this 1 8 inch shaft, you can see that it just spins freely on there, independent of the, of the gear behind it. Yep. If I were to put the minute hand back on here, you can see that the minute hand and the hour hand are completely separate from each other. Alright, so let's pull that off. Put that back on there. Now this this minute pinion is now driving the hour wheel, which is driving the hour hand. So I put the minute hand back on there, and we can see that it is turning correctly. There's one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, and so on. So let's look a little bit at the math of this thing. So let's take it apart again, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the gear ratios in this thing and the speeds, if you want to figure this out here. Let me, let me lower the camera down. It's probably going to squeak and shake and everything else. Oh, that's a bad one. All right. <laughs> so what we have here now, let's count the teeth on these things. This cannon pinion has 
eight teeth and this minute wheel here has 32 teeth we're not concerned about the, this uh, minute pinion right now so let's look at the math here here I've drawn out a 32 tooth gear and an eight tooth gear when this eight tooth gear turns one time it's going to use up eight teeth on this 32 tooth wheel here and that's exactly one quarter of the distance uh, the common denominator here is four um, so we can say that this is a four to one ratio it's pretty easy to figure out without doing math some of the gears are a little trickier than that um, if you want to figure out the uh, uh, the speed let's say of this gear here we can simply or I guess it would not the speed yeah yeah the speed so it'd be divide the small gear into the uh, large gear 8 by 32 and we come up with 0 0.250 rph so this wheel right here is going around at 0.25 rph and that's based on this wheel going around one revolution per hour all right so you just simply divide the small wheel into the big wheel and you can get the RPH or the RPM, whichever way you want to look at it. <coughs> Excuse me. I use um, RPH. It's just a little easier to do the math. Um, so the second part now, let's talk about the pinion and the hour wheel and its relationship to one another. The minute pinion is a 10 tooth gear and the hour wheel is a 30 tooth gear so we can say alright if this goes around one time it's going to take up 10 teeth which is exactly one third of the wheel so we can say now it's a 3 to 1 ratio we can do the math on this we can divide 10 by 30 and we can prove that it's going around one third of the way 0.333 it's one third now if we want to find out what the speed is of this hour wheel we need to multiply that by the speed of the pinion that's driving it and we discovered up here that this wheel here is going at 0 0.250 so therefore the pinion which is attached to it is also going at 0 0.250 so we multiply multiply those together and we get uh, 0 0.083 so that is how far or fast that wheel is going per hour. That's kind of a, it doesn't really tell me, I mean, it, it tells you something, but it, it doesn't really relate that, that well until we add how many increments are on a dial, which is 12. We multiply that 0 0.83, 083 by 12, we get 0.996. So that would be the revolution of this wheel in a 12 hour period. 0.996 is virtually one. It's virtually just a one. One revolution per 12 hours. And that's what we want. Now there's a there's a quicker way to figure this out. Um, we got a four to one ratio gear, three to one ratio gear. When we have combinations of gears like this in a gear train, we can add up those ratios, or I should say multiply those ratios. So we got 4 times 3 equals 12. 1 times 1 is 1. All right, so the whole dial train is a 12 to 1 ratio, and that's what we need. We can go further by uh, 1 divided by 12 equals at 0.083 again. All right, and then we uh, multiply that by 12 divisions on the dial, and we come up with that number, and we can prove it again. 0.996 revolutions per 12 hours. Um, so you can use these formulas to figure out any, uh, any, any sets of gears that are in your clock um, because it's very important to figure those out because um, the whole drivetrain, the escapement, is all geared for only one thing and that is to turn this little shaft back here one time per hour so that the dial train will work 
If this is going around two times per hour, well, it's not going to keep time. So, if you got any questions or, or, or got any comments or, um, or maybe I didn't explain something correctly or maybe I explained it completely wrong, um, just let me know. I'd be glad to know. Uh, we all learn from our mistakes, and uh, that's just the way it is. If we didn't make any mistakes, it wouldn't be very much fun now, would it? So, anyway, um, have a good day, and thanks for watching.